Couple of quarterback controversies headlining week 13. And it's an early week with three games on Thanksgiving. Hey, how are you folks? Jason Horowitz, glad to be with you on CBSSports.com. It's Tuesday judgments, and of course that means it's time to talk to our NFL columnist, Clark Judge. And uh, Clark, Brady Quinn, Donovan McNabb were both pulled in their respective games this past weekend. They've both been named the starters moving forward for this week. Was either of those decisions the right one? Well, they're two very different issues. I mean, Brady Quinn had a broken index finger, and, and that seems to be an issue because he's going to see Dr. Andrews and going to have it examined. And I know the Browns have talked about him starting this week, but it's predicated on his passing this exam. So that had something to do with it. But at the time, at least at the time, Romero Cornell said that wasn't the reason. If that's the case, if it's because he took him out because he was playing poorly, absolutely it was the wrong thing to do. And the same thing with McNabb. I mean, they're down 10-7 at halftime to the Baltimore Ravens in Baltimore. You don't put Kevin Cobb in there and let him get eaten up. And that's what happened. The predictable happened. I think you flush that game, and that's important to a very important game for Philadelphia because they're in the playoff mix. Remote as their chances are, they're still there. And with Cleveland, you know, you, you, you've got a young kid, you risk damaging his psyche. Interestingly enough, both of them were 8 for 18. Yeah, absolutely, and neither one was doing anything offensively. Nope. Let's focus here on Philadelphia, though, because obviously uh, this is the one with the history here of the Philadelphia, the love-hate relationship with Donovan McNabb. Mm -hmm. uh, of late, the the history here with Andy Reid, especially the last four years, because he's playing just is coaching just 500 football the last four years. Right. Uh, when you look at the Eagles next year, are we going to see McNabb and Reid there, or McNabb and Reid somewhere else? Well, I think we'll probably see McNabb somewhere else. I, I, I think the um, relationship has been fractured with what happened last weekend. Um, I think he's a starter for the short term, and Andy made it clear he's a starter, my starter now. Didn't say for the rest of the year. He said now. So I think next year. Uh, there'll be an open competition. I would expect Kevin Cobb to be the quarterback, but I wouldn't expect Donovan McNabb to be there for that decision to be made. I think he'll probably move on. Uh, Andy, Andy's got to survive the rest of this year. Um, he's had two really bad games, but I think he will be the coach, and he should be the coach. Uh, you know, over 10 seasons, very successful year, but oh, the yeah. last four, again, have not been very good. Uh, let's talk Monday night because uh, you got the good of the Saints. <laughs> you had the first half, which was good of the Packers, and the second half, they kind of just fell off the earth here, uh, giving up 51 points after a giving up three the week before to Chicago. Right. What did you take out of that game uh, between uh, New Orleans and Green Bay? Well, I mean, New Orleans was in a must-win situation to stay up with everyone in the NFC South. They're at home. Uh, you like desperate teams at home. They were desperate. But I'll tell you what, I mean, they just they could have scored every time they had the ball. In fact, they scored almost every time they had the ball. And if I'm Green Bay, I come out of that game saying, do we have the defense to, to mount a charge here? Uh, on Chicago and Minnesota because I thought the Packers were going to be the team to beat in that NFC North. After watching last night, I think I'm leaning more towards Chicago now. And we talked about it, December 22nd, big game, Green Bay at Chicago. But, boy, the Packers couldn't stop anybody last night. Again, it was a desperate team, tough situation, but they melted down. Uh, Clark, are you sick and tired of hearing about the conversation that maybe the Packers shouldn't have stuck with Brett, uh, shouldn't have gone with Aaron Rodgers this year? Yeah, sure, because it's 20, 2020 hindsight. I mean, he put them in an untenable position. They made the decision. They've moved on. Uh, we apparently haven't. <laughs> yeah, and, and Aaron Rodgers in wins and losses this year has certainly been a telling point to what the Packers have done. Uh, one interception in the five wins, eight interceptions in the six loss. But look, hey, the Packers made their decision. They're going to move forward, right. and that's exactly what they've done. All right, let's talk about the Jets because they are the other recipient of that deal because Brett Favre is now there. When you look at what they did the last two weeks, mm -hmm. winning at New England, winning at Tennessee, where do you put them among the contenders in the AFC? Well, they're certainly one of the teams to beat in the AFC. I'm not sure they're the team to beat. You've got uh, Tennessee, but a team I'm going to tell you to watch for is Indianapolis, because Indianapolis is mining the charge, and look at the next four weeks. They've got a cake schedule. They're going to be there at the end. But the Jets are going to be there, too, because the Jets have a cake schedule next four weeks, too, and they have to finish with Miami at home. But I tell you what, not just winning at New England and winning uh, at Tennessee, but winning at Buffalo also. That's a very difficult place to win. And, and those three together put them on the map. And I think, yeah, I, I'm looking at them now. They're gaining all sorts of momentum. Plus, they have a quarterback guys believe in, and he now is very comfortable in that system. Yeah, that they're one of the teams to beat in the AFC. Yeah, Pittsburgh in Pittsburgh and the Jets could be a very interesting could, could game be. if you yeah, saw and that Pittsburgh's in the team I neglected to talk about, Jason. I love them, especially when they're healthy. Yeah, especially there and especially with that defense. One last thing here, Clark, because it is Thanksgiving week, and this has been a topic for a couple of weeks, but you've got a winless team in the Detroit Lions on mm -hmm. Thanksgiving. And it's not just this year that people have talked about they don't want to see Detroit on Thanksgiving. But look, it's a tradition, and it's a longer tradition than the Cowboys on Thanksgiving, and it goes back to the 30s. 
do you think we've seen the end of football in Detroit on Thanksgiving, or can the NFL not get rid of this tradition? No, I don't think we've seen the end of it, um, but I think we should see the end of it. I mean, I, I think we at least should see uh, flex scheduling with those games because I'll tell you, there's one game I know I'm not going to watch on Thanksgiving, and that's the Detroit game. I don't want to see them get destroyed again, and that's what happens every year. And I think the NFL needs to look at this because the NFL is all about ratings. I mean, you talk about tradition. I love tradition. I, I, I'm really a believer in it. But the NFL is a believer in ratings, and they're believing believer in marketing. That's why they took the NFL to Europe. Um, they look at the ratings of this game. I bet they're abominable. And I think they'll look at it and say, you know, maybe there's a chance we should start to go flex scheduling on, um, th- on Thursdays, on Thanksgiving. Maybe we should move them to the night game. I don't know. But you're not getting the ratings you should. Well, we'll see how it all plays out. They eventually have to be get uh, to get better. But as someone from from Detroit, there's something that goes, wake up, Thanksgiving Day Parade, Lions football, Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah, but it kills your appetite for the turkey, <laughs> doesn't it, Jason? <laughs> no, nah, turkey and stuffing always tastes good. Clark Judge, thank you very much, sir. We'll see you Wednesday here on CBSSports.com. Thanks, Jason. All right, folks, and don't forget, for everything else from Clark Judge and Pete Prisco, be sure to stay with the website. That's it for Tuesday Judgments. Take care, folks.